All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, February 26th. We got a bunch of games on today's NBA slate. Actually, a really good just sports day overall. So very excited for that. And yeah, we're coming off of a winning night. We only go one and oh. We had one final play last night. It was the Denver and Grizzlies under, which cashes for us. Coming off a losing night, just slightly, but the night before. Feels good to get back in the winner's column. We we're on a crazy stretch in February. We're still up like 13 units in February, which blows my mind. But let's keep that momentum going, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's run up the likes on today's video. And always let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments there, guys. But like we do in every single video, we're going to jump into each and every game on the slate. I'm going to give you my thoughts, talk about the game. I'll give you my leans, but my final plays, what I actually track and what goes towards the record, those plays will be in the pinned comment so make sure to check out that pin comment throughout the day i update it and let you guys know what i'm actually going to be rolling with so if you want to jump on my back and roll with me or if you do want to fade me but yeah guys make sure to keep an eye on that pin comment let's go ahead and jump right into the first game here we have the bucks three point favorites at home as they host the suns total sitting at 230 right now i've seen that at 231 on a couple books so i think it's moving in that direction these two teams have not played this season, but last time they did, the Bucks won 132 to 122. We all know when that was there back in March last year. Um, but in terms of their last 10 games here, Bucks 7 and 3 against the spread. They're 3 and 3, though, in their last six at home. They're playing better on the road than they are at home. 4 0 in their last four games on the road, but they are at home tonight. Um, Suns 5 4 and 1 against the spread in their last 10, 12 and 4 against the spread in their last 16. And Booker is getting healthy here. And in terms of healthy or not healthy, Giannis is doubtful in this game. So it doesn't look like he is going to get the run here. Without Giannis, I do think that the Suns team has a good chance of competing. So if we can get three, three and a half, I'm going to lean towards the Suns plus the points here. In terms of the total though, 230, I think they're 230 and a half. I think this one does go over. Now, I'd probably only look at it up to like 232. I'm not saying it's going to be this wide margin of hitting the over, but I do think that both these teams can go out there and score 115 um, a piece, whichever way the chips may fall. So I'm going to lean towards the, the Suns here and the over. Make sure to keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if those do become a final play, either of them. Uh, moving on, we got the Hawks taking on the Nets. Hawks, five and a half point favorites here. Total two, 33 and a half right now. These two teams last played December 28th, and that game ended with a Brooklyn win. Minus seven was a spread. Brooklyn didn't cover, but this is a way different Brooklyn team, and quite honestly, a way different Hawks team. A lot going on with the Hawks as of right now. Um, also here in their last 10 games are six and four against the spread. We know the Atlanta Hawks at home are better than they are on the road. They're three and one in the last four games against the spread at home here. Brooklyn six and four against the spread, but on the road, they're 0 and three in their last three here. I think that this Hawks team looks like they're starting to put some pieces together. And I'm thinking that the Brooklyn Nets are struggling. Their offense just doesn't look like it is where it needs to be. So I'm going to lean towards the Hawks here. Minus the points I've also seen couple books with five uh, so if we can get a better line than five and a half which you see in the graphic here that's great I don't know if this becomes a final play because I also think it's going to contradict what I just said but I also think this Nets team could just say you know what let's keep this one close we might lose by three four points but still cover so I don't think this becomes a final play but if I had to lean if I had a gun to my head on this lean I would say the Hawks just because they're playing better basketball as of right now but I don't totally love the play um, what I do like in this game and actually has a very good chance of being a final play would be the under two 33 and a half here i can see this one sticking around in the um in i guess the the higher 220s i just don't think that either of these teams you know have shown that i guess you could say like that exceptional offense consistently as of late the hawks have they've scored 130 a couple different times in the last few games but then they have games of 108 107 101 so not consistent and then we just talked about or i just talked about brooklyn having some struggling offense here in their last 10 games uh they've scored below 100 points a couple times i think it was three times they haven't broken the 110 mark like in four of those games so they're not going to cut carry their weight i don't think in this game and if i think it's still going to be a close game this one we could see cashing that under there so i'm gonna lean towards the under that has a way stronger chance of being a final play if I'm being completely honest moving on here we got the Bulls taking on the Wizards Bulls four point favorites at home total 224 right now these two teams last played in mid January here Bulls one and a half point favorites they lose that game by three points so Washington took it they were at home I will say um, and they also played in December as well and Chicago actually won that game so they've split the last two games that they have played I believe they played earlier in the year I 
being fully transparent, don't have that in the notes. But um, I want to say Washington won, if my brain served me correctly. But I only know those last two games for certain here. In their last 10, Washington 5-5 five and five against the spread. But they're 3-2 and two in the last five on the road here. And the Bulls... They're four and six against the spread, but those four wins have all come at home. I think this one is going to be a pretty interesting game uh, to note here. I just think that four points is a little bit too much to give. No Porzingis for Washington here, so that's worth noting. Chicago, DeMar DeRozan back in the lineup, everything like that, but Goran Dragic is the only injury to note there. Uh, Chicago just hasn't been playing as well as we'd like to see uh, to lay four points here. So I know they're at home, and I get that, but we've seen these two teams kind of bounce back and forth all year long um and i don't see why that would change today so i'm gonna lean washington here plus the points if this was i don't know bulls minus two minus two and a half i'd probably lean towards the bulls so this is strictly numbers based it's not really oh i think the bulls or the washington wizard way better than the chicago bulls it's not that it's really that number that we're looking at which is the point of the show and the spreads that we're looking at right so i'm gonna lean washington plus the points and in terms of the total i do think this one gets towards uh that late 220s number so i'm gonna go ahead and go the over 224 and a half um, guys, before we get into the rest of the games, I do want to talk to you guys about the potential of you guys becoming a baller. $2.99 a month. We have so many new ballers as of late. And I'm always trying to give back to you guys. I will say, and I always say, the first reason you should become a baller or want to become a baller is truly to support the channel. That is how we can continue to make better and more content. So $2.99 a month, that is just complete like support, right? But I take it a step further and say, you know what? Okay, yeah, you get the emoji next to your name. You get emojis in the comments. That's all well and great. But what I like to do is really contribute towards you guys for what you're giving me, right? So we are putting out models every single weekday. We have a spread and the total model. And then we have a player points, rebounds, and assists model. That's coming out as well. All in the green this season, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, we post that through a Google Sheets. You get the private link um, if you are a baller every single day. It's on the community tab of this page. So if you do want access to that, be sure to become a baller today, guys. There's a link in the description. Also, there's a join button next to the subscribe button. I think you got to be subscribed before that shows up. But go ahead and hit that join button. But if you can't find the button, there is a link in the description. Make sure to check that out. And yeah, again, we have plenty coming down the line too. We've been uh, doing the model series with the ballers. We have that kind of on a pause right now as we get our bearings. We get some big news coming up soon. But uh, yeah, guys, consider becoming a baller today. It would be much, much appreciated. Now let's jump back into this. We got the Lakers taking on the Mavs here. Mavericks, four-point favorites at home. Total way up at two 36 in this one these two teams played in mid-january dallas won 119 to 115 that was a two and a half point spread so they did cover there and then the last 10 games are five four and one against the spread i'm talking about dallas but they are struggling on at home one two and one in their last four at home but you do have a lakers team that's struggling on the other side of things right four and six against the spread in their last 10 only two and four in their last six on the road here I don't totally love what I'm seeing out of this team. Um, and they have all obviously the injuries that they're dealing with too, or some of them are injuries, right? Anthony Davis and LeBron James have had their foot fetish injury on the injury report for every single day. Um, but D'Angelo Russell actually is injured, downgraded to doubtful Sunday uh, with the ankle. And then for Dallas, no new injuries there. I do wish that this spread was a little bit bigger. Give me more confidence in leaning towards, um, excuse me, leaning towards the Lakers here. But I am going to go Lakers, even if D'Angelo Russell doesn't play. I'm not too concerned that right now but we get the foot brothers anthony davis and lebron james on the injury report if they play they're both probable i do lean lakers here i could see them actually winning this game outright i'm not going to go ahead and claim a money line play here but i do think that this one is a lakers play and i also like the oh uh excuse me the under here 236 this game probably to me sticks around that 230 mark for what reason i just don't really trust either of these offenses to truly get towards that uh dallas yes they're scoring 120 when you blink right they're also scoring 109, 111, 111. Same thing with the Lakers. They have these big scoring nights, and you kind of expect, okay, they can score. The stars on the team, they're going to score, right? You have Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, and then LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You think scores galore. I just don't know if I see it here. Um, I can see this being a high-scoring game. Don't get me wrong, but 236 is one of the higher totals we have on the entire slate tonight. So I'm leaning under there. Moving on, we got the Cavs hosting the Raptors here. Cavs, seven-point favorites total, way down at 216 and a half these two teams last played a couple days before christmas toronto as four and a half point dogs won 118 to 107 um they're seven and one in their last eight games straight up four and one against the spread in their last five against cleveland and cleveland not playing to a one and four against the spread in their last five games here so you have one team that is trending in the right direction and you have one team trending in the wrong direction and i love this cleveland team they've been a really really fun team to watch 
but I think that seven points is too much to give Toronto. I'm leaning that way. Um, again, they've won four straight games, or they've won, uh, they've won, uh, what did I say, seven, I think seven and one in their last eight, right? That's crazy. They're playing good basketball. Against the spread, they're not as great. They've only covered two of the last three games. Coming off a win against Detroit, um, in which they didn't cover, but nonetheless, they're trending in the right direction. Cleveland seems to be struggling a tad, just a tad, um, but this doesn't become a final play unless Fred Van Fleet ends up playing. He is questionable as of right now, but seven points tells me he may not be playing, um, but if, you know, I guess I can consider it still, but that is one of, if not their best player, right? So I'm going to look to seek that injury report, uh, you know, see it all the way through before placing a bet on this game, but I do still think it's a lot of points to give this Toronto team when they're playing good basketball. In terms of the total, 216, for, I, I think the books know something I don't because I could see this game completely being in the mid 220s, which is a massive difference between what I'm projecting and what the books are telling me. So I'm going to go a hard over on this one. Like this is a strong lean, but there's got to be something there that I'm being a dumb dumb about. But that is the lean that I'm going with. And I'm trusting this big old gut. Moving on, we got the Rumble and Cover and Thunder taking on the Cover and Kings. We have two teams, the only two teams in the league that we've given nicknames to this season playing each other tonight. Uh, they played in late January. The Sacramento Kings won 118 to 113. That was a closing spread of five and a half. So OKC actually covered that game by a half of a point. In their last 10, OKC 5 4 and 1 against the spread. Only 2 and 2 in the last four at home um, during that stretch there but the, the king's not doing too well either five and five against the spread in their last ten three and four in the last seven on the road both these teams have been cashing overs though for the last six times they've played the over has hit now that is probably why this not uh, number excuse me is so so high but you know what I could literally see this game being a mid 240. So, you know, I always say like the 240 rule, right? If you guys watch every single video, I pretty much say like, I don't even really entertain overs that are 240. This is 239 and a half, so we're, we're, we're right there. But I actually do think this game could go over. Does it become a final play? My mind's still in a pretzel because that is such a high number and I like unders more than I do overs usually, right? So that is like completely going against what my bread and butter seems to be. But I could see this game being very, very high scoring. Sacramento's coming off a double overtime game in which they scored 176 points too, right? Like they're no, they're, they almost scored 200 points in the last game. Uh, and that's why, that's why I just truly do think that this not line could go over like i know that was a double overtime game but both these teams not much defense actually pretty bad defense on both sides right and they can score the rock and play up tempo so i'm gonna lean over in this one in terms of the spread it is a tough one for me but i do think that uh this okc team at home getting three and a half points seems like a little bit too much i think these two these teams uh do match up fairly well do i think the kings can win this game probably i will say probably but i do think that you know in terms of how they play against one another i think it's gonna be a close game you give okc at home a couple extra points here i'm pulling the trigger on that um, all right, we got a few games left on the, on the slate here. Before we do that, guys, I do want to let you guys know that we are over on Prize Picks, giving out our player props every single day. It's on TikTok. I've had my username pop up a couple times here. Make sure to check that out, guys. We have Thrive Fantasy and Prize Picks plays over there. Not just NBA either. We're doing golf. We're doing NHL. So if you do want more player props and stuff like that, make sure to check that out. And you can use the promo code for Prize, uh, prize Picks, Guy Boston. That's 100% of your first deposit match, as well as that same code over on Thrive fantasy 100 of your first deposit match let's get to it golden state taking on minnesota here golden state two point favorites total sitting at 233 in this one they played on february 1st minnesota has five point dogs actually won the game 119 to 114 now obviously golden state has had some injuries that they're dealing with steph curry is out draymond green's questionable andrew wiggins is out here um in terms of minnesota no major injuries to note Torian prince is questionable currently town still out in this one two points so it doesn't seem like it's like I, I would still think the Warriors should be, um, I guess, more heavy favorites. This Minnesota team does not look like they're working out as of right now. So even with Steph being out, it, if Draymond's out, I'd probably stick away from this game. And I know Wiggins, we do have him being out. I don't think it's Clay Thompson show is going to win this game type of thing. But two points is not all that much. So I'm going to lean Golden State minus the two here. In terms of the total at 233 and a half, I also like the under. I think that there's a lot of key pieces missing from both of these teams. I'm going to go under. I think that could be a sloppy game in which you don't really see that sloppiness all that much from Golden State. And you definitely get that sloppiness from Minnesota. So if you get slop for a slop, slop for a slop equals under. 
Um, all right, Portland taking on the Rockets. And I know that's not even true. Like, you have two sloppy games about the last one. You have two sloppy ga- two sloppy teams playing. It could lead to an over easily. But uh, you guys know what I mean. Uh, Portland taking on the Rockets. Portland, nine and a half point favorites. Total, two 30 right now in their last 10 games here portland four and six against spread rockets five and five against the spread which i chuckle at that because they're two and eight straight up so they're actually covering games but it's because they're getting huge numbers at times double digit numbers kevin porter jr still out Jalen green downgraded two out in this one anthony simon still out for portland um no other major injuries to note here but this rocket team obviously I would say that they're one of the teams that you can put them in the fade always category. I know that uh, we didn't want to fade them. It was a couple nights ago against who they play Golden State. I think it was like a nine point spread. They still lose that game at 15 points. So they're just not trying here. I'm going to lean Portland minus the points. I don't love how big a number this is. I don't think Portland is that uh, ultimate trustworthy team for this number either, but you just can't back the Rockets right now. You're a crazy person if you're backing the Rockets right now. And then in terms of a total 230, because I can't back the Rockets, I'm also not going to back an over here, so I'm just going to slightly lean towards the under because I think only one team is going to come into this game actually playing basketball. Uh, Moving on, we got the Nuggets. They did not look that great last night. Nuggets last night took an L to Memphis, 112 to 94. We did cash the under in that game, so I'm not all that bummed about it. But I'm um, in the last, and Nuggets are two and a half point favorites here at home. Total 233. Last time they played was mid January. Denver won 115 to 103. Um, they also played earlier in the year. Um, I believe in earlier January, uh, Denver won that game as well. I don't have the final score up in front of me. The Clippers, they're ro- they're hot and cold right now. They're really rocky. Two and four against the spread in their last six. Denver four and one against the spread in their last five games. We just talked about the one that they uh, kind of dropped the ball on there. In terms of injuries, Zubac is out here. Aaron Gordon is questionable for Denver. In their last 10, Denver seven and three against spread at home. Four and oh in their last four games. I think even though they're on the back-to-back, they got to come up back from that loss last night and say, F this, we got to win this game we already have this team's number right now um so i think they play well against this clippers team i'm gonna lean denver minus the two and a half points and i also like the over at 233 i know that's a pretty high number again we don't usually go for these higher number overs but i do like over 233 and that is all i have for you guys today hope you guys do enjoy the video and uh yeah if you do hit that like button hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you guys in the next one all right peace out